Good evening. It's good to be back with y'all again. The house of the Lord. Anytime you come to the house of the Lord, it's it's a good thing. It's a it's a good day. Um, you know, I've been uh, preaching a lot. The Lord's been putting on my heart a lot. A lot of these messages I've been preaching lately, no matter where I go, has been on witnessing or the lack of witnessing. And uh, well, the Lord just had had me on a tear on preaching on that. And and uh, I was telling Brother Jim, I. I was studying a little bit this morning. I got up at 3 o'clock this morning. I just woke up, couldn't go back to sleep. Went downstairs, made a cup of coffee, and started thinking on what I was going to preach tonight now. I mean, that early in the morning. The Lord just blessed me, and uh, we had a good old time. I mean, we'd had church before church, and, and I've had church after church, and we're going to have church again, and I'm, I've just had a good day. Um, this, this message, it's not, I'm not going to preach for very long tonight. Uh, uh, Lord's let me take a different turn. And, and I just want to give you, maybe give you some encouragement for, uh, uh, you know, tomorrow's Monday and, and uh, you got to start the work week again, except for Brother Jim. Uh, you know, I, I, I have to, so maybe this is some encouragement for me. But uh, just give you something to think about. And I'm uh, only going to start off reading one verse. You don't have to turn there if you don't want. But it's in the 25th chapter of the book of Proverbs, and it's the 25th verse. And, and uh, I'm kind of thinking, you know, what I was thinking today was that the way this verse reads is, is it's good news from a far country. And I got to thinking about that, and I got to getting blessed. And I got to thinking about, not necessarily you know that the message is from the Lord, because everything that's been said tonight has went right in line with what I was thinking about this morning. I got to thinking about the, the, the men and women of, of, of the church that have went on before and the things that they'd seen and the things that, they, that they've done, uh, whether they've been gone uh, uh, 25 years or whether they've just been gone but a day. Uh, all of the wonderful things that they have seen on the other side. Uh, wouldn't it be great if they could just, uh, uh, just, just send us something, just uh, send us a telegram or something and, uh, and say, I've got good news uh, uh, from a far country. Uh, uh, man, it's all Everything's here. Everything we've heard about our whole lives, it's here and it's waiting for the faithful. And I got to thinking, boy, isn't that just fantastic thought to, uh, to know uh, uh, that, it, that it is there. I believe wholeheartedly it's there. I believe it's there because the Bible says it's there. Uh, that's the only proof that I need. Uh, you know, I can remember back... Uh, uh, many, many years ago uh, uh, that a guy asked my dad, uh, uh, he said, how do you know that there's a God? Uh, what makes you believe so hard in God uh, uh, that you preach and you get in that Bible uh, and you live the way that you do? Uh, and dad said, well, I believe that there's a God because of uh, uh, the way He works in my life. Uh, he saved my soul uh, and everything in the Bible, I believe, proves that. Uh, and the guy said, well, you can't see Him. Uh, uh, you can't hear Him. Uh, so how do you know that there's a God? Uh, uh, Dad said, well, you know what? Uh, uh, I said, you can't see the wind either. Uh, uh, he said, but you can see the evidence of it uh, uh, when it blows the trees. Uh, uh, he said, when you're outside, uh, uh, you can feel that wind uh, uh, touch your skin. Uh, uh, Dad said, I have that same outlook on God. That's how I know He's real. But listen, I've been thinking about Dad a lot. Uh, uh, he's been gone 12 years on Father's Day. And... Uh, you know, this time of year, I struggle a little bit, uh, especially when uh, I'm preaching and things because I just think uh, how wonderful it would be to have my daddy sitting on the front pew, amen, and the loudest one in the church. Uh, you know, I just, I just hope, uh, I hope and pray uh, uh, that everybody can have uh, uh, that relationship with their dad uh, uh, to know that I miss him so much, uh, uh, but I wouldn't bring him back for nothing. I wouldn't want him to come back for two minutes for nothing. After what he's seen on the other side. But listen, I want to look at a few things uh, about good news from a far country. Uh, and in these days, this day and age, uh, uh, those of us that are saved, those of us that are born again, uh, uh, we have to hold on to these things uh, uh, because of this wicked world that is around us. Uh, uh, Brother Taylor and I were just talking before service uh, about some things that he had seen on the TV this morning. Uh, uh, some preachers preaching false doctrine uh, and churches full and people just latching on to it. Uh, and you know, Brother Jim said, uh, uh, we 
need to pray for our new converts. Uh, and that is exactly the reason why. Uh, uh, because the new converts still on the milk of the word. Uh, uh, they're not on the meat of the word yet. Uh, uh, they ain't been on this way long enough. Uh, maybe to not be able to discern right away uh, uh, right from wrong. Uh, uh, what they're being told whether it's true or false. Uh, uh, that's our responsibility uh, to help them with that. Uh, uh, listen, but you get these new converts uh, or people that's not really even saved uh, because they're going to these churches and they're just being told uh, uh, sign your name on the member registry uh, uh, make sure you pay your tithes every Sunday if you can't be here just send it with somebody and you're okay and that's false that's a false doctrine but listen we need to cling on to these things uh, uh, that we're going to preach about tonight. A uh, uh, lesson, you know, the good news from a far country. Uh, uh, the first thing I think of is, uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, uh, uh, that whosoever believeth in Him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, isn't that good news from a far country? Uh, uh, that tells us uh, uh, there's a way out. Uh, uh, that we're not set on this path. Uh, uh, that we're on just because we were born into sin. That there is a way out there. Listen, uh, a man fell in the garden uh, and our situation was hopeless uh, uh, from the very first minute uh, uh, that Adam sinned uh, uh, sin entered the world and man had a sinful nature from that point forward uh, everybody was born into sin uh, uh, you know just because uh, of one man's disobedience a uh, uh, sin entered the world uh, uh, because of one man's obedience uh, uh, there was a remedy made for that uh, isn't that good news uh, uh, from a far country? Uh, uh, listen, uh, well, back when they lived under the law, uh, they, that sin was only stayed for a season. It wasn't forgiven. The sin was stayed. Uh, uh, listen, what we're living under, under grace, uh, uh, which is the unmerited favor of God, uh, uh, that sin is forgiven. Uh, the Bible says it's cast as far as the east is from the west, uh, uh, never to be brought to remembrance again. God don't hold that stuff over our head. Uh, isn't that good news? Uh, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, anything that we've done. Uh, anything that we've done in our past. Uh, uh, you know, if we, if we ask God to forgive us, uh, He's faithful to forgive us. And it's put away. It's gone. You know, the... Society might try to hold it over your head, but I wouldn't worry too much about what society thinks. Uh, I'd make sure you worry about what God thinks. And when He forgives you, He forgives you 100% and He forgives you to the utmost. <clears throat> but listen... I started looking at some scriptures and stuff. Uh, and I got over in the book of Ephesians. Uh, uh, let me read you something uh, that ought to make you want to shout. Uh, it's in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. And it's on about the fourth verse. Uh, it says, But God who is rich in mercy, uh, for the, His great love wherewith He loved us, uh, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace uh, his kingdom toward us through Jesus Christ for by grace are you saved through faith uh, and not of yourselves it is a gift of God uh, uh, not of works lest any man should boast uh, isn't it great to know isn't that great news uh, uh, to know that while we were yet sinners uh, uh, Christ died for us uh, while we were yet in our, just in our horrible state that we were in uh, uh, Christ said that one's mine uh, I'm going to die for that one. I'm going to lay down my life and shed my blood. I want to give that one a way out. You know, I'm glad I was one of those ones. This brother testified that he don't know uh, how anybody goes uh, uh, a day without uh, without Jesus in their life. Uh, uh, you know what? Now uh, that I'm back on this way, uh, uh, now that I'm back uh, uh, serving Christ, uh, I don't know how I ever did it for as long as I did. Uh, I guess just by the grace of God uh, uh, that I wasn't taken out of this world uh, uh, before I had a chance uh, uh, to get things right uh, and get back on this path. Uh, uh, can I tell you, to me, uh, uh, that's great news from a far country. Uh, Oh, that even though uh, I had turned away and gotten to a backslidden condition, uh, uh, can I tell you, He never stopped loving me. Woo, I'm about to take a running fit. Uh, I cannot just express to you how much that means to me to know uh, that I closed my Bible, uh, uh, stepped out of the pulpit, uh, and went back to drinking and carrying on. Uh, and one day God 
said, oh, you got to get this right. And I mean right now. And I surrendered. And you know, it was like I just never stopped. He just poured the blessings on me. Oh, there was no punishment because He still loved me. Oh, it's good news. Oh, but listen. I got to thinking a lot when I was reading through this stuff today. I got to thinking one of the greatest, one of the greatest scriptures in the Bible to me is it is finished. It is finished. Everything leading up to this, all of Jesus' ministry leading up uh, to that awful crucifixion, it came down to it is finished. When that sacrifice was completed, when that shedding of blood was done, it is finished. Well, that's good news for, for me from a far country because that plan of salvation had to be completed before we were going to be eligible to be redeemed by that shed blood of Jesus. But listen, I get, I've, I've preached this many times before, but I'm going to preach it again. Uh, that Jesus, uh, uh, when He came down in the form of a man, you know, he, people were supposed to be setting aside uh, uh, the very best that they had. Uh, if they were a sheep farmer, uh, they were supposed to be setting aside uh, the very best lamb that they had, uh, uh, the most perfect specimen, uh, uh, spotless, without blemish. Uh, uh, that one was to be set aside for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, the people that farmed grain, uh, I don't know if you know that, not everybody farmed sheep and stuff. They still had grain for Farmers, uh, uh, they were supposed to set aside uh, uh, the very best of their harvest. Uh, uh, the very best that they had to offer uh, was to be set aside for the sacrifice. Uh, well, but just like in this world today, uh, uh, they started thinking, uh, uh, well, I think I'm going to keep that one for myself. Uh, I'm just going to give this lame lamb uh, because it's no good to me anyway. And oh, well, that grain got a little moldy. Uh, uh, well, just save that and use it for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, you know, today, uh, uh, people give Jesus or give God uh, their second best to everything. Uh, they give God their second best of their attention. Uh, second best of their attendance. Uh, and second best of their time. <clears throat> but listen. Jesus told God, He said, you're not finding any pleasure in these sacrifices anymore. Prepare me a body and I'll go. I'll be that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we'll only have to do this one more time. Uh, I'll be that ultimate sacrifice uh, uh, for the forgiveness of sin. Uh, uh, we won't have to go through this all the, every year. Uh, uh, you know, that we'll just take care of this once and for all. Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, that Jesus had stepped up uh, and said, send me, I'll go. Uh, uh, because you know what? Uh, I don't know if this world would still be here uh, if we were still living under the law uh, and having to rely on sacrifices every year to stay sin. Uh, you know, you know what? You can't get people uh, that are supposed to be Christians to come to church. Uh, uh, must less get somebody uh, to put something back that's their very best uh, and sacrifice it to God. <clears throat> but listen, even though we were given our second best, Heaven gave the, gave the very best that they had. And that was Jesus. Uh, uh, listen, uh, He paid the price uh, uh, so nothing else had to be done. Uh, do you know that under the law uh, that the high priest had to give a sacrifice for himself uh, uh, to make sure that he was clean uh, before he could offer a sacrifice up for you? Uh, uh, number one, if the high priest wasn't clean, uh, he was probably going to die uh, uh, because of the way that God's vengeance... Uh, uh, you know, he couldn't go... In, they, like I said, they would tie a rope around... Uh, of the high priest before they would go into the Holy of Holies uh, uh, because if there was anything in that man's life uh, uh, that was contrary to the law uh, that he would be struck down and only he could go in there uh, so they could pull him out with the rope. Now you can look that up uh, on anything in history about the religious customs of the time. Uh, uh, they had bells uh, on their garments uh, uh, so the people outside uh, could hear them moving around in there. Uh, they could hear them bells. They would know that he was still upright and breathing. <clears throat> but that's what, had to be go that's what they had to go through every year just to stay that sin. For one more year. It didn't matter how devout you were. It didn't matter uh, what religious sect that you belonged to. Uh, it didn't matter. Uh, everybody had to give that sacrifice to stay that sin for a year. <clears throat> but listen. 
But when Jesus was nailed on that cross and he was suspended between heaven and earth and he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost, he said, it is finished. Oh, listen, there's a stone. That was it. That's all that needed to be done. Oh, but listen, he goes to the grave and he says, I'm going to come back. Just wait on me. You know, he had prophesied, you'll tear this temple down. I'll rebuild it in three days. They were thinking a physical temple and it took like over 30 years to build. They're like, well, how are you going to rebuild this in three days but he wasn't talking about that he was talking about his body he was talking about this plan of salvation uh, isn't that good news uh, uh, that he walked out of that tomb uh, that when they went there uh, uh, the stone was rolled away uh, and there was nothing left in there uh, but the linens that they wrapped him in isn't that fantastic news but listen I think a lot of times uh, we lose sight of what a horrible thing it was. Uh, uh, there's a singer I like. Uh, he sings a song called Go, Go, called Go Close the Window. Uh, and it's a song about how God uh, has this window in heaven that He can look down. Uh, and when Jesus was being crucified, uh, uh, the words of that song, He says, uh, Go close the window. Uh, 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 you know, he can't bear to see what the soldiers are going to do. Uh, so go close the window till the soldiers are through. Uh, listen, he said he couldn't bear to see what was happening to his son, his only begotten son. Uh, listen, it, crucifixion was a horrible thing. Uh, and I, every time I think about it, I think about it. It's just not the crucifixion. Uh, uh, that was bad enough. Uh, uh, that was a punishment that was set aside uh, uh, for the most common criminal, uh, uh, for the scourge of society. Uh, uh, they would be crucified. Uh, it was supposed to be. Uh, uh, kind of like a, a demeaning that was just suspended between heaven and earth for everybody to see. Uh, but listen, it was everything leading up to that. Uh, uh, they just didn't take him uh, all nice and clean and take him up there and nail him to that cross. Uh, uh, listen, they mocked him. Uh, they, they pulled his beard out of his face. Uh, they spit on him. Uh, they beat him with an inch of his life with a cat of nine tails. Uh, they pushed a crown of thorns down in his head and called him the king of the Jews. All of that. He went through for us, for each and every one of us, everybody that will accept the shed blood of Jesus Christ that will call out on His name. He did it for every single person. He, he withstood that shame. <clears throat> but listen, what makes me happy is He did come out of that tomb. Just like he said he would. Uh, listen, death, uh, death had no hold on Jesus. Uh, he conquered sin on the cross, but he conquered death in the tomb. Uh, you know, I get to think it sometimes. Uh, I'm kind of silly this way. Uh, uh, but I get to think it sometimes uh, uh, that what, uh, what old Satan must have thought uh, uh, when Jesus said, uh, excuse me, I'm going to need those keys uh, uh, because death, hell, and the grave has no hold over my people anymore. Uh, uh, death has no sting uh, uh, for my people. Can you imagine? I've heard many people preach before that Satan probably thought, oh, I got him. I got him. But in reality, me personally, when I hear that, I think Satan knew better. He knew. Jesus said in three days, I'm coming back. Satan knew that was going to happen. <clears throat> you know, why would he not? It was the Son of God. You know, why would he not believe it? Uh, but listen, <clears throat> I've heard this song, you know, that saying we've sang it here before. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Wasn't well, that good news? Because he lives. Because we've accepted that gift of salvation. Uh, we can walk out of here tonight uh, uh, without carrying a heavy load. Uh, uh, we can get up in the morning uh, uh, praising God for just letting us get out of bed uh, and go on. Uh, you know, like I told you before, I thank God every day before I get out of my car uh, that I have a job to pull up to and a time clock to punch. Uh, uh, to me, I'm thankful for that. Uh, uh, because there was a time uh, just a lot of people I knew uh, uh, were unemployed. Uh, and I managed to hold on to my job through all that. Through the recession and the tough times. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, I was able to feed my children uh, and I've never, never once uh, uh, not wanted to thank God and be appreciative for that. <clears throat> but listen. Bible says in the 2 Corinthians, 
It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In the 116th Psalm, it says that God says the death of His people is precious in His sight. Listen, I'm in no hurry to leave, but I'm glad to know that when I go, that my death is precious in God's sight. That when I lay this mortal body down, when I step out of this earthly realm, I'm going to be present with the Savior. And this, this is just, a, this is just a, a temporary dwelling. Uh, we have trouble sometimes grasping a hold of that. <clears throat> but this is just temporary. Listen, the Bible says over in John 14 too, familiar scripture to everybody. <clears throat> Jesus says, in my, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place where I am you may be also. But it also says, if I go to prepare a place, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Honey. So, having said that, we know that he went to prepare us a place, but we also have that promise uh, uh, that he will come again and receive us unto himself. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if, if we doesn't come back uh, uh, before we all uh, leave this world, uh, uh, you know, then, then we're still going to be with Jesus. Uh, uh, we're still going to be able to claim that mansion. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, I would like to be here uh, uh, when that trumpet sounds uh, and that eastern sky splits wide open. Uh, oh, what a thing to see. Uh, and when we're all called up uh, uh, to meet him in the clouds, uh, uh, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing uh, to be able to leave this world like that? <clears throat> and I'm telling you, I believe, I believe wholeheartedly that we're in that 11th hour. We're in those last days. I believe the state of this world, I just don't know how much more God's going to let go on. I don't. It's just every time you turn around, the immorality has become the norm and people just start accepting it. And I just don't understand where it's going to stop before God just says, I'm done. Go get my church. And pulls the church out of this mess. But listen... I'm glad that heaven's my home, or that I'm just a pilgrim passing through here. Oh, listen, I heard a preacher say one time, and it's always stuck with me. When God saved me, I got to change the address. And I've always hung on to that. I thought, boy, that's just that little thing. It just blesses me to pieces. Uh, that I'm not bound here. Uh, this is just temporary. Uh, I'm just passing through. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, Bible says in 2 Corinthians, uh, it says, but as it is written, I have not seen or ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God prepared for them that love Him. Uh, listen, everything that you have here, you can have the, the fanciest mansion, the nicest car. You can have everything your heart desires. Uh, uh, but I promise you that it's temporary. Uh, uh, that it will not last. Uh, it will fade away. Uh, uh, it will rust. Uh, it will break down. It will fall down uh, uh, through time. Uh, it is not forever. Nothing in this world uh, is forever. Physically. <clears throat> but listen. The Bible says in Matthew, 6, chapter of the book of Matthew, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Uh, you know, isn't that something? Isn't that good news? Uh, uh, that the God is telling you uh, to lay your treasures up in heaven uh, because up here, uh, uh, there, nothing's going to bother them. Uh, they're going to be here waiting on you. Uh, you got to lay up uh, uh, those spiritual treasures in heaven. Uh, uh, listen, we were just talking about things, uh, <clears throat> Brother Taylor, before the service, and we got to talk about how bad this world's gotten you know i used to remember back in the day when i was growing up that we would go over to my uncle's house and they wouldn't even be home and we wouldn't know it and we just walk up screen doors only thing closed door of the house wide open you just walk in and yell, anybody home? And nobody answered, shut the door and go home. Uh, but you know what? Churches never used to be locked. Uh, I can remember a lot of times church doors were always unlocked uh, uh, because they wanted the church open uh, uh, for its people to be able to come uh, anytime they wanted. Uh, but can I tell you, you dare not leave your church unlocked anymore uh, uh, because they will come in and they will steal everything that's not bolted down. Uh, I've heard them stealing stuff uh, out of the poverty box. Uh, I've even heard of them stealing food uh, out of the food pantries. Uh, I've heard of them stealing all manner of things. Uh, uh, the PA systems out of the church. Uh, now how many years ago do you think it's been uh, where nobody would ever, ever think about stealing anything out of a church? Because people feared God. The church was a sacred place. You did not go in and defile the church. 
Because of what people still feared what God would do to them. See, to people back then, God was still real. Whether you were saved or not, whether you served Him or not, God was real. And there were consequences. <clears throat> but we've got to the state in this world now that people can just deny God all they want. Uh, uh, there's no consequences to anybody's actions anymore. It just seems like a Wild West free-for-all anymore. <clears throat> but listen, isn't it good news that that's only temporary for us? That when we leave this world, we'll never have to worry about that stuff again. Yeah. We'll never have to worry about locking your house. You never have to worry about making sure somebody doesn't steal your car. You know, that it's all going to be passed away. <clears throat> but <clears throat> one more thing, I'm going to quickly close. Like I said, I don't believe that it's going to be long before Jesus comes back. I really don't. In the book of Thessalonians, about the fourth chapter, it says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the 18th verse of that, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Isn't that something? Uh, that it says to comfort each other with the fact uh, that when Christ comes back, uh, you're going to be called up to meet Him in the air. Uh, so just if you get discouraged, uh, uh, comfort one another with those words. <clears throat> but listen, the things we go through in this life are for a short time. And I know there's a lot of people has had a pretty rough life. They've had a pretty rough time. And you know what? I know a lot of people that no matter how rough that time got, they still carried on carrying on. They never walked away. They just drew nigh unto God. They just gripped on to Him a little tighter and asked Him to help them get Him through. Uh, you know, but that the good thing is that the things that we go through in this life are only temporary. They're just for a short time. In the book of Romans it says, For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which we shall receive, that shall be received in us. Isn't that good news? That everything that we go through, <clears throat> it's just for a short time. It's not going to linger on. <clears throat> good news from a far country. Christ died for us. Made a way that we would never have to see a devil's hell. He's with us every day. Blesses us answers our prayers, walks with us, and gave us a promise that death would have no dominion over us. That there would be no sting. <clears throat> that we had a place prepared for us already. I wholeheartedly believe every child of God, every born again child of God, has a place already prepared for them in heaven, waiting on their arrival. I really do. <clears throat> but that's all I have tonight. But I don't ever want to, <clears throat> if you could just stand across the building real quick if you can. Um, just every head bowed, every eye closed. We're just going to, I never want to close the service without giving somebody the opportunity to come and pray. Because this is a really good place if you've been struggling to come and pray and let the brothers and the sisters of the church pray with you. But we're only going to tarry just for a moment. I believe if you need to pray that you'll know it and you'll, you'll come pretty quickly. <clears throat>